Okay, have a look at the following positions and see if you can tell me what's wrong with White's play. And I'm not blaming White in, in, in both cases. They're both lower level intermediate players. Black players in this position, e5, and White plays knight takes. Right, pawn takes. So what's wrong with this move? This move. Right, that's the first one. Number two, in this position, no, black plays you know, queen e5, and white plays knight c3. Right, so what's what, what's the connecting factor between these two positions? Let's go back to the first one again. Right, well, the problem with this move is it's a strategic error, in, in a sense, because it's not horrific, it's not a blunder, it's not a mistake, but what you're doing here is, is you really want to be fighting over this square or this square. So this knight, right, might want to come back to relocate or maybe here, here, come back to f5. Right, but the main thing in this 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 uh, position, in uh, this Sicilian setup, is you want to be fighting for d5. Right, white wants to get this knight on d5 at some point. Right, and the problem with this move is it just encourages one of the pawns just to totally take out that square. Right, so this is a strategic error. And, um, you know, I'm certainly not blaming the player for that. I am blaming something in a minute. Let's have a look. Look at this one then. This is problem. In this position, we've got this knight on d5 in a fantastic position. It's the best minor piece on the board. It's better than this, better than this, it's better than this. Right, and what white does is drop the knight back into an inferior position. Right, You don't want to do that if you've got a knight in a really good position like this. You don't want to drop it back. Maybe black was thinking, white was thinking, sorry. You know, black's on this pawn and he's on this pawn. Right, so I need to, if I do this, I'll defend both of these. Right, obviously, because this is now defended. So, in a sense, that's like kind of a good move. They're looking at the threats in the position. However, most of them are ghost threats because after, let's say, a better move would be c4 cement in this square or b4. After, after say c4, right, black can't take this anyway because of this. Right, it's just a tactic, tactical uh, refutation to this move. So this pawn's absolutely safe. And even if the king moved away, then we still have bishop g5 if, if queen takes and we're on this rook. So this is not a threat. All right, so what if queen takes this pawn? Well, strategically, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Just, you know, I'll play the queen somewhere. Uh, and then I'm going to bring one of these two rocks to, to this open b file and take advantage of this. And in conjunction with my knight, you know, launch a mating attack. So in both cases, why makes a strategic error, if you like. And why do they do that? Well, they do that because mostly uh, a lot of stronger players tell intermediates, lower intermediates, you know, beginner chess players at 1,000 to 1,400, that sort of level. Don't worry about strategy. Go out there and focus on tactics, 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 and reducing blunders. And in many respects, that's good advice. But at the same time, I do think that ignoring strategy is a bit of a mistake, really, because, you know, I think it's still important to learn strategy as well. I don't think it's good advice to say, go away, you're not strong enough to learn this stuff. You're still dropping pieces. So how do you get better at strategy if you're a lower level intermediate or an intermediate player? Well, number one, start taking note of that in your game analysis when you look over your games. Number two, go over annotated master games. They are a fantastic source of strategic knowledge. And number three, read books on strategy in general that are suitable to your level.